Here are two short examples of how our digital clips can complement your visitor offer. The commentary on the clips can be multilingual and they can be easily viewed through standard equipment. Steam ploughing took place mainly in lowland Scotland, where the ground was level and free from big stones. The fields were usually more than 10 hectares in size. Two steam engines were required for this task, one at each end of the field. The power for pulling the plough was transferred to the steam engine's winch, which was hung underneath the boiler. Two men operated the steam engines and two men operated the plough. The engines had to be supplied with water for their boilers and coal to burn. The water would be supplied to them in a horse-pulled water cart. The plough was a four-furrow reversible plough. This meant that it could plough in both directions. That is up the field and down the field toward both steam engines. One set of four ploughs would be in the ground ploughing and the other set of four ploughs would have been out of the ground. John Fowler of Leeds was one of the main steam engine manufacturers. The cost of a new steam engine in the 1900s would have been around £100. Today, as a collector's item, they can fetch between £50 and £100,000. The engine at the top of the field would blow its whistle to tell the other engine at the bottom of the field to tighten the steel rope. This would lift up the part of the plough that had been in the ground ploughing and enable the other part of the plough to drop down onto the ground, ready for its four ploughs to start ploughing when the other engine started pulling on the wire rope. The men would now be on the other side of the plough and the engine would start to pull. The men on the plough would steer the plough for a straight furrow. The steam engine that was not pulling would move over the unploughed field to be in place to pull the ploughs towards it again. When the plough got to the top of the field, the men would dismount the plough and change ends of the plough, ready to plough in the opposite direction. This was a process of steam ploughing. This type of ploughing by steam engine was eventually succeeded when tractors were progressively introduced from the 1930s onwards. Before the 1850s, there was no thrashing mills about any craft or firm. The heads of the corn had to be removed for the chef using a flail. This was a giner made hand tool. It was twa bits of shaped wood, the hunnel was thinner and longer, and was tapered and wheel shaped for working. The thicker iron was heavier, and it was used to hit the shaves. The twa bits were joined with a thick bit of leather, tied with a beet pint made by the local suitor. The shaves of corn were lous and placed on top of an all sheet. This was to catch the heads of grain. During the winter this was dean in the barn. Half a dozen shaves were spread out like this and they were hit with the shorter thicker end of the flail. The using of the flail was a skilled job and took a file to learn. The action of the flail had to ensure that the corn was hit with the hail length of the flail head. The pile of shaves were moved so that the ar got hit with the flail to remove their heads. It took about a quarter of an hour to de sack shaves. This shocking and hitting of the shave took off the heads and just left the stray. Here we see a bit of the shaft that has nae been flailed, it is a' the heads on, and a bit of the shaft that has been flailed, the the heads off. You can fairly see if it is flailed is. The heads of corn in the sheet had a lot of calf in it. This had to be teen out with the grain afore it could be used. To do this, the grain was lifted up and allowed to far down again. The wind would blow the lichter calf away, and this just left the heavier grain to fall in a separate heap. 
This job of fanning the flailed grain would be done in the barn, between twa open doors. The grain and the calf would be thrown with a shuffle into the draught between the doors, and the calf would be wind separated for the grain. The grain would be gathered in the sheet and fanned again. It would be collected into a pail and the dressed corn would be used as necessary. <laughs>